Hello and welcome to another program of AQS Guild Buzz with Bonnie. And today I'm here with representatives of the Garden State Quilters from New Jersey. Welcome, Pam Farrago and Lori Darnells. Welcome to well, the show you today. For us. Okay, well, let's begin by talking about your guild, a little bit of history about the guild. Well, basically, our mission is to share and spread the love and knowledge of quilting. And we do that through our monthly meetings, our programs and workshops, our sunshine donations, newsletter, and social media, Facebook and Instagram. We were actually founded in 1981 by seven teachers who wanted to gather to share their love of quilting. So in its heyday, the Guild had over 250 members. In recent years, though, we hover more around the 100 member mark. And this year, we're currently at 95 members. So even with the pandemic, our membership is still strong, and this is our 40th anniversary. When we asked our members for input into the history of our guild, the members told us that their fondest memories are of the friendship blocks, quilt of the month, the sunshine quilts, the challenges. One year we even did a state banner, raffle quilts and quilt shows. Our members have won international, national, state and local awards. They've authored books, they've designed fabrics, and many have formed lasting friendships. And don't we all, you know, I think that's probably one of the best parts about quilters is you're never a stranger when you go to a quilt group meeting, are you? You're absolutely right. And I think every year since we started, we've made friendship quilts. And back in the beginning, they took pictures of each quilt and actually sold them as postcards. And so, and then and in so how, did you, how did you make the friendship quilts? Did uh, the guild members make blocks and then you assembled them? Yes, that's exactly what happened. We had a theme, all made blocks, handed them into the committee, and then they would assemble them into a quilt top, have it quilted and bound. And then usually we raffle that quilt off at the strawberry supper at the end of the year. And then in um, 1983, there was an edition of the Ladies Circle Patchwork Magazine. And that featured quilts made by several of our members also. And then I believe every year they would have a challenge quilt. A theme was chosen, members would create the quilts, and then they'd hang them on a clothesline at the Strawberry Supper, and um, members would vote, and then awards would be given for those quilts. Well, so we have a pretty what? interesting it, history. I think, I think challenge quilts always do what they say. They challenge us a little bit, don't they? Because there are usually some kind of rules uh, associated with those. And you know, uh, I belonged to a group in D Dubuque, Iowa, and we had the first article that was published about how to set up a challenge with your quilt guild. Uh, seven of us had done that ourselves, and it was in the American Quilter magazine. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> yes, and look what it started, you know, everybody now. And you know what? I think it makes us better quilters because we go out and try something new, or maybe we work with a different color we haven't used before. There's always some kind of um, challenge uh, for each one of us in those. And now you can say you're a trendsetter. <laughs> you know what? Here at AQS, we try to be a trendsetter. We try to stay <laughs> ahead of the pack and, and watch what's new and different and make sure the quilters everywhere know about it. <laughs> You're doing a good job. Uh, well, I know that you do a, a lot of sunshine quilts that you do for other organizations. So let's talk a little bit about those. Sure. Uh, before the pandemic hit, our group would meet monthly at the Chatham Library and sew the quilts, and we donate them to a local hospital. But since the pandemic, the local hospital has been unable to take our quilts. So the Sunshine Committee just went out and found new hospitals to donate the quilts to. And we also started donating quilts to Meals on Wheels recipients, which was something new for us this year. And we have received the loveliest thank you letters from the Meals on Wheels recipients as a result of getting those quilts. We gave them to them in October so they were nice and toasty for the winter months. Um, we also have a very nice relationship with the Daughters of the American Revolution. Um, every year we're asked to donate a quilt to their local fundraiser. And this year, even though they couldn't hold their event, we still made the quilt anyway and gave it to them. 
And as it turned out, it was the only item that they were able to raffle off this year. So that quilt raised $7,500 to support 95 homeless veterans. Wow, that's wonderful. And um, we also started donating quilts to the Innocence Project. So when someone wrongfully incarcerated is released from jail after many years in jail, we donate a quilt to them also. And even though we're not there to actually physically hand over the quilt, the people from the Innocence Project who do hand the quilts over to the um, exonerees say that they always have tears in their eyes because they can't believe that someone that they don't know would do something so nice for them. So quilting is just such a rewarding hobby. Well, yes, and quilters always give, don't we? Yes, ma'am. Well, certainly uh, the pandemic has affected every single one of us. And so let's talk about what your guild has done over these last few months, last year, basically, uh, to be able to stay in touch with your quilters and how have you done programs? Actually, the first thing we did was to reduce our membership fee to half because we felt that with virtual meetings, our members were really only getting half of what they were used to getting with their membership fee. And then thanks to Lori and our exceptional programs committee, um, we haven't missed a beat. We've continued to hold monthly meetings via Zoom and we've had a speaker at every meeting, but I want to let Lori talk about that because that's really her thing. It's your show now, Lori. <laughs> okay, so Lori, why don't you tell us how you're going about doing your programs right now? Okay, well, my co-chair, Dan Martin and I, we have gone through a list of many different lectures that we can bring and contact them and try to get them to come on board. And once we do, we put out a bulletin either through our website, um, our newsletter, as well as um, Facebook, uh -huh. yeah. and as well to, to let people know who's coming in to do our lectures, and we encourage them all to join our workshops the following day. Okay, so are you using Zoom then to do your lectures and your classes, or are you actually meeting in person yet? Well, no, we are all doing everything by Zoom. We, um, at this time, as as long, long as many others, um, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. All right, so so you're doing Zoom, and um, I know that you do some other projects that are like the block of the month. Um, uh, we've already talked about your friendship quilt. Uh, but how do you go about doing the block of the month? Is that done uh, in your newsletter? Well, when we were in person, we would have a, you know, everybody would, we would see the lady who's in charge of that and she would discuss it during our board meeting. But as Zoom, we continue with it through the newsletter as well as discussion during our monthly meetings. So we have everybody sign up that way. Let them know what, what, where to go and to follow the pattern of that special. Okay, and so, so if you do a block of the month, then at the end of the year, do you have a, a big show and tell of your block of the month quilts? Well, in June, it's our last month. It's the last month that we get together for the year. And we call it the Strawberry Supper, and which includes food, um, and show and tell, and that's, we will draw for the friendship quilt at that time. So we show the quilt will be finished at that time, and we also draw for the people who participated in friendship. So, okay. If you want, I can jump in here with the block of the month because it's behind me. Oh, all um, right. That's the quilt that you see behind me is this year's block of the month. The committee put up all of the directions and instructions on our Facebook page. I'm sorry, not our Facebook page, on our um, Guild website. So if you went onto the website every month, you could pull off the pattern, make your block, and then, you know, these are, you know, all nine of the blocks that we had this year. I just made mine quickly so we could actually show it today. <laughs> Good. And then these are all going to be shown at the Strawberry Supper at the end of the year. Everyone will hold up their block of the month quilt. Um, and you could make it any color, any design, anything you wanted, but you just had to use the nine blocks. 
that were published this year up on our website. And so do you have good participation in that? Do quite a few of your members participate in the block of the month? They do, they do. A lot of members participate in that and a lot of members participate in the friendship quilt also. Well, for we one thing, sometimes, when, uh, sometimes when you participate in a program like that, you make blocks that you normally wouldn't make, right? Oh, you're absolutely right. I never would have made that little sailboat block that you see there, but I love it. Now I want to make a whole quilt out of sailboats. I think it's just so cute. And the friendship quilt, the way that works is for every block that you make, you get a, a coupon or a ticket to put into the hat to be drawn. So the more blocks you make, the more chances that you have of winning the friendship quilt. Okay, all right. Well, it sounds to me like you have some really good programs and the best part about it is you're keeping your guild members active and together working on some projects, aren't you? We do, and yeah. we also have been able to keep our lending library going, which is interesting. At the face-to-face -face meetings, we would just bring all of the books to the meetings and you could take one out, check it out, and then bring it back at the next meeting. But now we kind of do a porch drop. The person who's responsible for all of the books just sends out a note and says, okay, this Saturday, if you want a book, just come by. You know, and she puts it on her porch so people can pick it up and take it with them and then bring it back, you know, the next month or the next Saturday, whenever they're done using it. So a lot of things haven't stopped for us. They've just been done a little bit differently. We've had to be a little bit more creative. Well, and like for quilt kits for some of your project, how are you dispensing those? Our Sunshine Committee is just putting out their information on, in the newsletter and saying, if you need a quilt kit, just let us know. We have so many people on the committee that they're able to just drop those quilt kits off at whoever's house wants to sew them. So some people do the piecing, some do the quilting, some do the binding, um, some do the cutting and making up of the quilt kits, but that Sunshine Committee is just amazing. They're just out and about driving around, picking up and dropping off bits and pieces of quilts as they're finished. Well, and then they drop them off to a quilter and maybe somebody else binds them. So there may be four full steps in there. Yes, there may be multiple people who have touched that quilt, but it gives them the opportunity also to see each other because they, you know, they kind of get together outside, they've got their mask on, and then people don't feel quite so alone. Well, yes, and, and hopefully in the next few months, we'll get to be able to meet together. And won't that be fun? That will be so much fun. We're hoping in New Jersey that things will open up enough that we'll be able to have our June meeting in person, our strawberry supper. You know, in the past, it was get together. The Oh my goodness, the ladies would make such wonderful food. We'd eat, we'd talk, we'd have a super show and tell. And it was just a nice way to get together before our summer break. So this year we're hoping that we can do a mask wearing, socially distant, face-to-face -face strawberry supper where we can actually just see each other and see the quilts, you know, face-to-face -face and um, just kind of get together and have a little fellowship before we, we break for the summer. So that's the goal anyway, fingers crossed. All right, well, I think we all have our fingers crossed to be able to do that. Well, I want to tell you a little bit about the quilt that I have hanging behind me. Uh, it, it actually is just a quilt top. I have this class that I call the Exquisite Scrap Class. And you'll notice that it's all pink and blues. Well, somebody said to me when I said I was going to make a scrap quilt, you can't go buy fabric for a scrap quilt. And so you don't tell a quilter that, do you? <laughs> so I went no. <laughs> to a little Amish store in Kelowna, Iowa, and I bought a fourth of a yard. This was back when they would cut a fourth of a yard, a fourth of a yard of fabric of every pink and blue they had on the shelf. And I made two quilts uh, like this, and I still had pieces left over for some other projects. <laughs> um, but. This program is being sponsored today by the AQS Let's Quilt series of classes that we're doing, and I'm teaching those. Class number one was uh, the basics. We did a nine patch with sashing and borders and a binding. The second class was quilting with triangles, and you learn how to use or how to make half square triangles, quarter squares, and flying geese. And now this one is the exquisite scrap. 
and there may be some people because this is really geared for beginning level quilters beginning to intermediate may not have enough fabrics to be do, able to do a scrap so i encourage them to go buy two yards of one fabric that's light and use that every place that you use the light fabric and then the rest of their fabric should fall in the medium and dark uh, values um, but if people want to participate in this, it will be a free class and it will be shown on YouTube. The AQS channel on YouTube is Quilt TV. And you might go out, check it out right now. And if you're there, you hit that subscribe button. And every time AQS uploads a new video to Quilt TV, you'll get an email that lets you know what was uploaded and you can go see it right then. So it won't get uploaded until it's all finished and ready to go. We're just ready to start taping this program. And so watch Quilt TV on YouTube. And you can also just Google QuiltTV.com. It'll take you there as well. And uh, I hope that a bunch of you will participate. And the one I'm working on for the class is all different colors. You need 150 four inch lights mediums and dark so you need 450 squares all together it takes a while to cut those so if you want to start cutting you can do that at any time and then you'll be all set when we're ready to do the program so well i want to thank you ladies for participating in the aqs guild buzz today it's always fun to find out what the quilters all over the country are doing and how you're staying in touch and this is the way that AQS can stay in touch with you. And we hope you'll join us again for another program of the AQS Guild Buzz with Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you for inviting us. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Thank you.